hey, this is the first episode of Becoming a Light Warrior. So just transitioned from reviewing Call Her Daddy, used to be the Call Her Daddy fan club podcast, to now is Becoming a Light Warrior. And this first episode, we're going to talk about technology and a relationship with it. And I wanted to say that I am not perfect. I still give into technology and I still have a pool on my phone at times in some social media apps though I am improving my relationship with technology and it is getting so much better. And I know I still have a lot of healing to do on my own. Um, But this is coming from a spot of desire for myself to interact better with technology and also just sharing the knowledge that I've gathered from books and from other teachers that have talked about technology being in our lives and you know, technology is not a bad thing. It is a good thing. It is something that is a helping us. It is a helping us. <laughs> it is helping us evolve as human beings. I believe that I would not have had such a huge spiritual expansion without technology. Not saying that it's not impossible. It is possible. But there were things on TikTok and Instagram and a lot of YouTube videos that really guided me to the truth. And the truth is to experience life with joy and to experience life in the present moment. You know, there's not all of these like surface level societal things that we're taught that that is life. That's not life. You know, and all of these technological things that we have technically is not life, but it is currently part of our life immensely. It's huge. It's like we are so addicted to technology. We are so addicted to consumerism and consuming all of these things, not just eating, but buying all of these things and having all these gadgets and have on all of these things to make us feel better. But those are all things outside of our body. And things outside of our body don't always make us feel good. You know, This is something that um, I believe is only from human connection. When you have a connection with someone, you know, say with a, a partner, a friend, or even your child, there's a symbionic thing about us touching. So when you touch a human being, there is something there. It it's that is a connection. And We've associated those connections with technology since it's been an explosive and expansive thing that we've experienced. But technology, again, it is good. It's not bad. There are things that, you know, we can improve about it. But the number one thing is that we have to improve our relationship with technology. Okay, again, we're addicted to it. And we allow um, technology to reaffirm our addiction to our emotional states of insecurity and lack and unworthiness. So there's um, a lot of things that Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about. And there's another spiritual teacher as well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who it is. I don't see it on my mind right now, but it doesn't matter that, you know, we're using all of these external things to feel good inside, but it really is us who decides how we feel, you know, and it doesn't matter the actual situation or person that's in your life. It does matter, but it doesn't in terms of the way that you feel in your emotions and you allowing someone to make you feel a certain way. That's fine, but it's not the truth. You know, the truth is to have inner stillness inside of you and to feel peace inside of you regardless regardless of what's going on. And I'm still working on that. You know, I am not perfect. I am not at a a monk-like state where I can handle every single thing. I get irritated easily. I have really high standards and I do not accept things that are less than what I put out myself. And it makes me really think, am I truly being the person that I think that I am, even though I spend a lot of time on on using technological things. Cause I do use my cell phone a lot. I use a, my computer a lot. I write on my computer, but I also spend time on social media to post stuff. But there are some times where I do um, get stuck in endless scrolling. 
that is way less, but it does happen when I'm tired and I'm not taking care of myself and I'm emotionally feeling depleted in a way that I am using other sources to make me feel a certain way. And other sources are sources outside of myself. And I recognize that and I'm working on that myself, you know, (laughs) but my, my relationship with technology is improving so much and I'd like it to be even better. I don't like the amount of time that I spend on my phone and it is what it is. Like the days that I'm working for posting, I usually spend about eight hours on my phone, but the days that I don't, I spend, according to my screen time, about four and a half hours But three and a half hours of that time is actually on YouTube. And I usually just have that playing on in the background music or whatever I'm listening to. Regardless, I still spend too much time on my phone. There is a pool in a draw that we are neurologically, um, we have programmed ourselves to neurologically respond to. So our neurons are have created a pathway to pick up the phone and we're going to get this feeling when we do. We're going to feel a certain way when someone doesn't text us back, when someone does text us, when someone likes a picture, when someone, you know, just gives you any kind of attention. We have an emotional response to it. So we have an, uh, an emotional connection to technology. But improving this will, in the long run, benefit all of us individually and benefit humanity. I think that technology is something that is going to help us evolve as human beings. And, you know, I don't know any aliens personally. I always say I'm an alien myself. But I believe that aliens out there, they have a, a higher sense of technology in which they're using their forces with their body in connection to whatever their, like say is their ship or their their home. Um, There is a book by Octavia Butler and it's called The Complete Exogenesis of the Human Race. And it's about the world ending and how there's a selective amount of people that survive and they survive because this group of aliens comes and saves them and puts them on this planet that is completely perfect in my eyes. It's a uh, super interesting. It's a uh, it's a planet that is actually a ship and it's huge and it is connected to every single entity species and alien that is living on it. And it gives you Every single, it will create and give you every single thing that you think of that you want. And when you're done with it, it has a way of, excuse me, I'm yawning, (laughs) as I always do. Um, It has a way of biodegrading it or breaking it down so it becomes part of the ship again. So it's a completely recyclable, um, reusable, composting, manufactured ship that is completely organic. And this is all organic matter and using tech, like intelligence that's within the like those entities, those aliens. They're using their technology that they have installed in themselves. And technology is not always like a machine or a phone or a computer. There's different, you know, ways that you can say or use that term for but in terms of our addiction to our phone, you know, this is something that was inspired because the other day I could not stop checking my phone and it was because I wanted a response from someone and I sat back and I was like, wait, is this a healthy response? Is this truly a healthy response? It made me feel complete, completely like a phony about the things that I talk about and the things I think I believe, which I do believe. I do believe, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this is my life's experience. Um, 
but it, you know, it just really made me check myself and question. It's like, if you truly want to be on this path of a holistic life and you want to help other people, that if you truly want to expand and grow towards creating more peace on earth, it's like you have to live up to these things. And I'm telling this to myself, okay? So I was constantly checking my phone and I was feeling lack when I didn't get a response. See, that is a conditioned emotion. You know, it's like nothing was wrong. Nothing was going on that was bad. I was surrounded by myself and my dog. I was safe. I have a safe place to go home to. I have food in the fridge. I have clean water to drink. I feel good inside of my body. Okay. And I was feeling all of these feelings inside of me that were lacking, that were of urgency, that were of insecurity. And those are because those are past, those are conditioned feelings that I've felt over many years because of a certain situation. And I sat back and took a breath. was like, okay, this isn't me. This is my ego. And I would like to be present and just have a healthy relationship with my cell phone and text messaging. (laughs) You know, and it's like we're kind of... We're, I, I don't want to say we're trained, but we kind of are trained right now in this time space reality that we're in to have this urgency to respond to people, to respond to people's text messages, to respond to people's calls and like answer everyone, answer everyone's needs. And it's like, if we can't even take care of our own needs, how are we going to truly help ourselves? How are we going to experience a good life if we're constantly trying to meet other people's needs and those needs come from technology and this is something that's like completely intertwined in my personal life because I spend a lot of time on a computer and my phone for the reasons that I want to grow online and I'm so conflicted with it but it's funny because even before I had these desires to um just reach out and help people like reach out in a holistic way or reach out. No, no, it's not very holistic. Let's say it's actually a technological way, but reach out to as many people as possible. It's I'm the work, the amount of work I'm doing is fine. And I do enjoy it because I do feel good when I do it. But when it comes to sometimes the, the feelings that I get in the screen time that I have, that that I see, like neurologically, it's not the healthiest. It is not the best choice for me. But this is what I have to do until I get to my goals, which is to have a lot of followers. And the followers are for to reach out to as many people as possible to try to hopefully convey a message to someone that will hear that will hopefully conduce them to to want to feel good and to feel peace and to learn to accept life and to learn to feel good about themselves and learn to be healthy and eat healthy and interact healthy and just live the way that they want but that they feel good and that they become aligned with their inner being their true self instead of all of these societal things and all these societal approaches and all these societal belief systems that are put on us. And trust me, I was definitely in that spot like two years ago. That was my mind two years ago. It's like I have to live up to all of these things and I have to notify all these people. I have to respond to all these people. And it's like we're constantly checking our notifications for what? To know something? What do we need to know? It's like, there are times where there's urgency as like if your partner's having a baby or if someone is dying, you know, those are times of urgency that that doesn't happen all the time. That's not something that constantly happens, but we check our phones like it is, you know, and 
you know, it's like check your phone. And I'm telling myself this too. Check your phone when you have time. When you have a second, create that time. It's most of the time, it's not urgent. There's so many things that are trying to catch our attention. And there's like Netflix, there's TV. For one thing, I don't even watch TV anymore. I rarely do sometimes, but it's a very rare occasion. And that is something that I took out of my life because, excuse me, drinking water. <laughs> Just because of the the time that it takes away from you doing other things. You know, it's a very sedentary thing. Watching TV should be a fun thing, you know? It's not something that, it's fun. It is fun, but not every single day. It's like, have your your limits in terms of actual good dopamine hits and good dopamine releases. Because when you do these things in small amounts, when you do them, they're so freaking enjoyable, okay? Seriously, it's like when you only get to see someone Say you only get to see someone like once a month or something and you don't talk in that time, but it's like leading up and you're just like, oh, I'm so excited to see this person. You know, this person's out of town or I'm out of town or whatever. But then when you guys see each other, it's just so much fun and it's such a good visit because it's it's just a good visit. And how am I trying to explain this? I don't know. I guess I could say this with my mom. I don't always get to see my mom a lot, you know, we talk and text sometimes, but that's different from being in person with someone. So when me and my mom are together, it's so much fun. And I mean, I'm away a lot of times because of the way I like to live. And I live in between Arizona and Alaska in New York. And I'm not always in Arizona, which is where my mom is. And we have some time where we don't talk. That's okay. But when we're together, it's so much fun. And it's like a such a good feeling thing, you know? And it makes that experience so much more good and fun and happy and just yummy. You know, it's like, imagine... But Okay, before technology, people had to... You know, without them controlling it, they literally could not watch TV. Um, But when the TV came out, there was maybe like once a week where they could turn on the tube or whatever and tune into this show. And they were so excited and they loved it so much because they only got it once a week. And that's like a healthy relationship with technology is getting it in little doses and enjoying it, you know? It's like setting limits for the time that you spend on social media and the time that you spend on checking notifications. And, you know, it's like this is something that I am working on myself. So it's like I am not saying that I am perfect. I am not. I like I'm working on this really, really um, hard. Okay, and I want more people to see that their relationship and my even my relationship with technology is a little bit unhealthy and I'd like to make it more healthy for my heart's purposes you know it's like the true essence of life is to be there in the present moment excuse me another yawn (laughs) semi-yawn is to be there in the present moment and to really hone in to how you feel inside and uh, just feeling gratitude for everything that feels good inside of your body because A lot of times, most people feel good inside. They just don't know it. And they're so focused on external life situations and conversations and gossip and blah, 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 and technology and all of these things that distract us from what it truly means to be alive. And what it truly means to be alive is to enjoy life. And this is really making me question myself, you know, the time that I spent on my phone, it's just, it is the way it is right now. This is the time. This is, you can go completely off grid. You don't have to have a cell phone. You can have a flip phone, honestly. 
And I would love to have that, honestly. I had a flip phone up until 2017 and I loved it. And I was so against like technology and I was so against like going online and doing all these things. Um, But technology came into my life when I was 17 years old. I'm 33 now. And since I was 17, I've had an addiction to technology. And it's something that has turned and trained my neurons certain feelings with certain responses you know it's like if I get a text back from a guy or I get a text from a friend or a family member I get different feelings for those and different emotions but it's like this is our inner being telling us to work on ourselves and again technology is not bad it is a good thing it's just The thing is that is bad about it is our unhealthy relationship and it's not the best for our soul. So there's a couple things that we can do, but they're going to be uncomfortable and that's okay. You know, it's like a pearl was not easily made. A pearl was not easily formed. It took a lot of roughing, roughing that whatever it was, a bunch of sand, a bunch of sand in a clam's mouth is termed over time which is hard, okay? Imagine having sand in your fingers and having it constantly underwater and just constantly moving. And then you created a pearl. That would take so long. And that's what a clam does. It creates a damn pearl in its mouth from its tongue, flicking around sand. That's what it does. And it's it's something that's uncomfortable. I don't know how the clam feels. I mean, it's doing its natural intuitive thing. Um... But I'm just saying that there's things to that lead to greatness and there's uncomfortable things that come through it. Like a diamond is made out of difficulty. A pearl is made out of um, a lot of work. And so is a diamond. Those things are made through a lot of work. Okay. And that's okay. It's, it's okay to be uncomfortable and it's okay to have discomfort. You have to deliberately choose to not pick up your phone or go to your, to your, or these technological habits that you've picked up over the years. And it's going to be hard, but you, if you truly want to change, you have to go through this discomfort. So we have to, number one, leave our phone. If you don't need to be on your phone, you don't need to have it in your face. There's no reason to be on your phone unless you're literally doing something that is um, for the greater good, which is for yourself. And for myself, that is reading a book or listening to an audible book or that is posting, which is something that I'm doing right now. And I Hope that I have someone in the future that will do it for me because I would like to spend more time in the present moment and doing adventurous things instead of being on my phone all the time. Okay? So not picking up our phone, leaving it. You're going to feel that I feel discomfort when I'm like, oh, I have this like pulling thing that I have a notification and I have to look at it. Resist it. Just take some deep breaths. Do a deep breath exercise. Breathe in twice strongly through your nose. (laughs) Hold it for like 10 seconds. And then let it out your mouth. Okay? Do that a couple times. That will physiologically change you. That will change the gas amounts in your body. When I say gas, I mean carbon dioxide and oxygen. Okay, those are gas molecules in your body that cause physiologic changes within yourself. And you need to physiologically change before you can feel better. You know, there's all these like affirmations that you can do, and there's all these other things, but there's specific things that you have to do, like exercise or breathing exercises or sleeping or taking a nap or stretching that physiologically change your body that you have to do to change your neuronal pathways through this uncomfortable state. And it will be difficult, but in the long run, when you actually accomplish that feeling of 
non-desire to pick up your constantly pick up your phone or have those like attachments to having a response to someone or something and yeah it will be difficult but in time you will have you will not have those feelings again and I don't know if there's anyone that is listening that is um like born from the year 2000 and above But if you are, you know, it's like you grew up with technology big time. So you don't know a time of your life when you didn't really have technology in your life. And I'm not saying that's, you know, every single person grew up with technology. Not everyone did. Um, But it's just more prevalent now because of the time and how time is changing. When I was a child, there wasn't technology. Technology became something more apparent when I was like 16 or 17. And... I had absolutely no care for it. I had an iPod one day that my dad bought me when I was like 16. And I literally threw it in a box and I was like, I don't get this thing, whatever. <laughs> and I got a cell phone for the first time when I was 17 or 16. And I, my parents um, told me I had to buy it myself, which was fine. I'm glad that they did that, that they didn't go and buy me one. And I was responsible for my phone bill. And that's something that I did do and I took responsibility for. Um, but I had a lot of fun texting my best friend at that time, me and my friend Chelsea that I grew up with, we were like inseparable and we constantly texted each other, but it was all fun and games. We were just like joking constantly, um, calling each other and just having fun. And that was like my first relationship with a cell phone. But, you know, in the nighttime, like when we weren't, if we weren't together, because we were always either at each other's houses, but when we were together, I wasn't on my phone. And when I'm with someone, I'm usually not in my, on my phone because I am there for that connection. And there's people that, you know, constantly want to check their phone when they're with someone. And that is something that I do sometimes if I'm expecting something or if I'm doing something or I'm not finished with posting or whatever. That's sometimes, but very rarely, I usually like to have like a more personal up close experience with someone that I'm with and so that it's intimate in that. And that doesn't always have to be romantic. It's just like you can be intimate with your family member in that you're loving and caring and you're being a listening ear to them and you're just being like accepting and loving with them. Okay. It's taking a stance on having this discipline focus and setting a time specifically for things um, for yourself, setting aside, because your phone isn't your life. Your computer and your TV are not your life. You can do things and you want to do things outside of those things. So setting a time when you do have all these other activities to put your phone aside and put your phone away, okay? And then giving yourself a dedicated time to be on your phone. Really sitting and thinking about what your mind, heart, and body are telling you. And that it's it's not that I have to know, you know, it's not that I have to like truly know every single thing that my soul is telling me all the time. Because, I mean, that's an intuitive thing that you learn and you know. And when you build that intuition... And you have like more unity with yourself and your spirit. Things just become a lot easier. And your addiction to technology will just lessen. But it's truly getting uncomfortable. Saying no to your phone. Saying no to TV. And saying no to all these technological gadgets that we have that take our attention away from the present moment. And that take our attention away from what truly is life and life moments, which is all the time, honestly. But technology is not bad. You know, we've got to learn to have a healthy relationship with technology. And this is something that I'm working on myself. But I've gained knowledge from this because of a book I read called Deep Work by Cal Newport. And hearing teachings from Dr. Joe Dispenza. And there's another, and Eckhart Tolle as well. So this is the first episode 
that was um i'd say pretty cool quick <laughs> about 30 minutes that's not i mean that's it is what it is i could go i could talk about this forever <laughs> i could talk about anything forever but um thank you so much for listening and being a part of this transformation of this podcast i look forward to seeing how it transpires Please follow um, the social media for this. On Instagram, it's Becoming a Light Warrior. And my personal social media Instagram is Jespecial, which is J-E-S-P-E-C-I-A-L-L-L. So three L's. It's my first name, Jessica, but it's Jespecial, okay? Please write me. Please comment um, on like whatever I post or message me um, or on whatever platform you're listening to this. I hope I get notified. I don't know. I'll get notified, but um, I'm still learning how to work with this podcast for with Spotify because it is big on Spotify. Just I um, don't interact with anyone. It's nothing personal. I just don't know how to. <laughs> um, yeah, so best of luck to you and everyone and myself and that we become stronger with our relationships and especially with the relationship with ourself. The relationship with ourself is the most important. Okay, and really softening your attention with technology too at times. It's not always necessary to be on your phone. So thanks for listening. Have a good day. Bye.